SJ. Welcome to Muskogee Radio, your weekly source for tribal and community news, interesting guests and discussions, plus a local events calendar. celebratory day at FAM. Well, the big question we have been asking folks around uh, this community and uh, other places, uh, why was it so important that uh, uh, you made this observance? Uh, Indigenous Day is a a growing, uh, what we call it, a trend, uh, uh, whatever, but uh, why was it so important that you do that? Well, you know, it's really important for us, not just as indigenous communities, but as, you know, the broader community of the U.S. to recognize the true history of the land we all call home today. Um, And so we are so lucky to have a um, mayor who is a citizen of Osage Nation who for five years in a row now has officially um, signed a proclamation declaring it Indigenous Peoples Day in Oklahoma City. One of the biggest themes of the day was that vibrant tribal communities don't benefit just tribal citizens, but everybody in Oklahoma. Um, And we had a wonderful opportunity to share that message with many of our non-Native community members um, on Monday. Now, the uh, movement, uh, the uh, trend has been to uh, replace Columbus Day with Indigenous uh, uh, Day, the celebration there. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts there about that particular issue, uh, replacing Columbus Day? Yeah, well, um, I don't see it as necessarily um, replacing. It's it's more of telling a fuller story and um, celebrating something that um, a, a, a more, a, a perhaps, truer story of the United States. Um, You know, I know that folks have feelings about that. And, you know, we were, I think that we need to all, I think we can have that dialogue. Um, But I see this as perhaps an even more American celebration of our shared history. Right. The um, comments we got uh, were ranged from the uh, almost... uh, angry and bitter to the uh, community sharing sorts of things. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, people understand uh, that uh, most of what we have been feeling is sort of left out and uh, uh, ignored. Mm-hmm. And now with, uh, with this change we see uh, uh, happening, uh, I think maybe we can gain a better understanding and perhaps cooperation. What do you think? I agree. I think that the more that we can really lean into what I call productive discomfort and have those hard conversations about how do we tell the story of us, how do we tell the story of us as Indigenous people, as, um, you know, U.S. citizens, um, you know, those are things that we need to have. And any platform to have a respectful um, discussion about that is important to have. As um, this trend uh, gains uh, popularity and and, uh, uh, support, we've seen major metropolitan areas around our nation uh, uh, Mm -hmm. make make the changes within their community and, of course, uh, tribes stepping forward that might uh, uh, not have uh, have done so in the past. They're... Uh, making this change happen. Uh, what do you see is is in that growing trend? What do you what do you feel there? Yeah, I think that what that reflects is a broader interest among you know citizens of those communities to recognize and affirm the importance of uh, the tribal nations in um, you know public conversation. Um, I think people are hungry for a more fulsome story of, um, of North America. 
um, both native and non-native. And I think that this trend reflects that. I think that it's going to bring a lot of healing um, to communities, again, not just indigenous communities, but non-native as well. Now, you mentioned the healing there, and uh, I think that's what everyone is hoping for. We were looking at uh, a lot of uh, people who were you know, quite happy about these things. But uh, we are, I'm also aware that there is a, uh, a segment of our population that is not happy with it. They don't, mm-hmm. don't like mm-hmm. the idea, uh, thinking that, uh, you know, we're all kinds of stuff, uh, accusations and charges we've been hearing left and right uh, from some folks. Uh, uh, have you run across any of that? Has there been any resistance? Has the museum encountered that kind of thing? Um, you know, I think that I've seen some Facebook comments, you know, but um, I have not encountered anybody in person who has been troubled or um, upset by the the recognition of Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, and, you know, the, the kind of surfacing of our stories doesn't necessarily mean, you know, the, the burying of another. Um, and so... I think that there's still space for people who, you know, I, I'm Italian American in addition to being a Wyandotte Nation citizen. And I think that there are really productive ways to be proud of Italian American heritage. Um, but I think, you know, the um, embracing, a, again, a more fulsome history of North America is going to be to everybody's benefit. That history, um as people continue to explore it, it's uh, um, not very, well, not the easiest way to say it's not very nice. And when they discover mm-hmm. some of the uh, uh, atrocities that occurred and things like that. And uh, I'm kind of, kind of curious now, does the uh, museum there uh, face this uh, this particular topic, this issue? How, how do you, is it treated mm-hmm. in some, some fashion there? Absolutely. So um, we have a one of our inaugural exhibitions is called Oklahoma, and it shares the collective stories of the 39 tribal nations in Oklahoma today. And we do begin that story with our origins um, in our origins theater. And then that kind of translates into or then takes you into a space about our ancestral roots where um we present, you know, a more complicated history of North America that, you know, when Columbus and other European settlers came to the um, what we now call the United States and North America, um, it was not a blank slate that there were vibrant, large communities um, of indigenous people across North America who engaged in um, literature, science, economic exchange, um, and that the the so-called kind of tabla rasa or um, new world, quote-unquote, um, was, you know, the result of um, warfare, the result of disease, um, and eradication of indigenous people. Um Now, we address that in a really um, kind of forthright way. And one of the things I'm really proud of is the exhibition also presents our people as um, active agents in that exchange. You know, when we when European uh, uh, settlers came, we engaged um, in warfare. We engaged in trade, in the exchange of ideas and philosophies, um, and many of our tribal nations were um, deep, experienced diplomats. Indeed, you know, it's the Haudenosaunee from which we derive our version of democracy. It actually has more in common with uh, those nations than it does um, classical democracy. Um So I'm really proud that not only do we focus on the atrocities that were committed, but we really invite our visitors into cultivating an abundance mindset of the amount of wisdom and um, contributions that Indigenous peoples have historically and do to this day um, contribute to um, the U.S. and North America. 
Now, during your opening, I was there to uh, to cover that uh, that day and uh, got a chance to to wander around the galleries and and things there, and was just for me personally, I was blown away by the the mm. magnificence of uh, the exhibits, uh, the thoroughness of the research that was reflected in. Uh, the knowledge that I picked up when I, being a native person, you think I didn't know that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, now, for uh, non-native uh, neighbors and uh, community members who may come through, or visitors from another nation, uh, has it uh, been a, a real eye opener for them? Have you have you heard that sort of thing? Yeah, certainly. Um, the you know in Oklahoma we have certainly made really important strides in our school curricula um, to ensure that indigenous stories and histories are shared um, from our perspectives and shared in a more accurate manner. Now, of course, there's more work that we need to do, but for those of us who you know went to school some time ago, um, you know these are these are new stories um or stories that have been just partially told and so it is pretty phenomenal to hear the range of responses that uh we hear to the exhibition one of the stories we always tell was on opening day um the husband of our senior curator overheard a couple talking in the gallery and the wife says to her partner you know uh I learned today that, you know, they all have their different, they all have different languages. I thought that they all just spoke Indian. And as silly as that sounds and as heartbreaking as that can be, she went her whole life uh, without realizing that, you know, each of our nations has its own language or dialect. We have our own culture, our own um, ceremony, art forms, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but she was able to pick that up in just a 45-minute walk through the gallery. And that really demonstrates the power of an exhibition that's made for, by, and about, or by and about Indigenous peoples, that we at FAM are able to tell these stories from Indigenous perspectives. Um, that's one thing that sets FAM apart from many other museums that present um, First American stories and histories, is that... Um, my department, the Department of Learning and Community Engagement, as well as the curatorial department and the executive office, we're all citizens of tribal nations in Oklahoma. And that really changes the way that we think about presenting our cultures. Um, and because we all have personal and professional responsibilities to our uh, respective nations. No, so it, we're, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm, go ahead. So we're, you know, helping create a new model for museums uh, that represent indig indigenous perspectives or museums that are culturally specific, like the National um, African American Museum of History and Culture. Now, hearing comments and uh, feedback that uh, you've just shared there, does it, I don't know, does it make you feel like you're accomplishing your mission? Absolutely. I think that you know, it's always alarming when you encounter um, the, the the lack of knowledge that some people have about our indigenous cultures, but I don't put the blame on them. I think that our nations are, have been and continue to be underrepresented in school curricula, um, as well as um, perhaps mischaracterized in media, in books, TV, and movies. And so it's no wonder that people bring those narratives to the museum. Um, and it's kind of our honor and our responsibility to help reframe and reshape those misconceptions. One of the major misconceptions that I've run across in my career is uh, uh, people think that uh, relationships between uh, Native American people and tribal governments and the U.S. federal government is based on race. And, mm -hmm. and it just, you know, we've actually uh, heard our, our current governor use a, a phrase like that. A and I'm thinking, you know, in this day and age, you know, how can people uh, stay so ignorant? Uh, I mean, they might know more about our, our dead ancestors than uh, 
the tribe just down the road. Now, does the museum take on a topic like that? Is, it, is that part of your educational process? Yes. So we have a whole section dedicated to misrepresentation. And one of the big things that, of course, we hear um, kind of related to the point you made is the idea that we are only a historical people, right? That Native people don't really exist anymore. And we still encounter a good deal of that um, at the museum. So we very intentionally make sure to situate Indigenous narratives in the present tense as well. So presenting, you know, Native people as contemporary people who come in all colors, you know, um, that come, um, you know, we may not be wearing moccasins. We may be wearing van sneakers or sandals. Um, we may be wearing a funny Native T-shirt or a ribbon skirt. So we intentionally through programming and through exhibitions, really present or highlight the diversity of Indian country today. Has the uh, state government made any uh, motion toward uh, uh, working with you, with cooperating, with uh, uh, realizing your mission and wanting to be a part of it? Uh, it seems to be kind of a challenge we're dealing with these days. Uh, has that motion ever been made? Well, I can't comment on any like particular pending legislation or current policy, but I will say that we have really great working relationships with the State Department of Education um, and many of our schools here. We have a trim, you know, some tremendous allies um, in the Oklahoma legislature, and um, and in fact, we were so pleased to host Lieutenant Governor at um, Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, so. I think that there is growing awareness and support for this project, um, you know, and one of the biggest cases is the fact that cultural tourism really benefits Oklahoma. That's something really unique that we can, um, we can offer the national and global stage. And in fact, you know, we have many, many requests from groups all over the world that are coming to Oklahoma for maybe a conference or an athletic competition or what have you. Um, and they want Sam to be part of that because they recognize this is something really unique that Oklahoma has to offer that you might not be able to experience anywhere else. So what better than to you know reach out to an indigenous-led institution um, to get an authentic, authoritative, and respectful presentation of culture? So I think the economic argument alone is really helping people understand the importance of embracing this expansive view of what it of Oklahoma history. Right. Culture. It's a, uh, such an important part of the state's history that had been overlooked. I remember I don't recall any of the history that I was taught in school ever made any <laughs> sort of uh, reference to uh, that other than the, the, you know, the land run reenactment thing that a lot of mm. kids got mm -hmm. to do. Now, um, it's, uh, it's it's so wonderful to to, uh, to see this, to, to tell this story and share this, that uh, uh, the idea for the museum did come actually from, what, the legislature at one point about 20, 25 mm -hmm. years ago, and uh, people said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Uh, it'll be great for the state and tourism, blah, 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 blah. And then later on, when uh, they figured out that, you know, this ain't going to come cheap, uh, mm -hmm. they backed off on it and left it uh, dangling, so to speak. And uh, many call for the uh, uh, abandonment of the project and uh, do what they could to, to recoup any, any funds or any investment there now. Um, but uh, what we see now is is probably the, the what I would call the pinnacle of, uh, of uh, 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 opportunity to learn and see uh, Native peoples and cultures in, in this nation. Now it's quite a, a full circle that uh, that uh, museum has come. Um, now, uh, what do you think about that particular uh, little little jaunt in history and to mm -hmm. the present time? I mean, how do you feel about it? Right. Well, any public project of this scale is going to face a lot of obstacles, and this has been a project with a long tail. Um, you know, I think that um, 
investments in arts and culture um, are always perceived with a little bit of suspicion. Um, and certainly we encountered that through the life of the creation of the museum. However, I think that um, the proof has been in the pudding a bit, so to speak, in, you know, in our first year seeing 130,000 visitors from all 50 states um, and 26 countries. So I think that we are going to help open the door for um, future cultural projects that, again, tell a more expansive history and share our diverse cultures. Um, down the line. So my hope is, is that, you know, we aren't necessarily the apex of all cultural projects in Oklahoma or all indigenous um, institutions in Oklahoma or in the United States, but instead we're helping opening the door. Um, so I might be a bit optimistic there, but, you know, that is how I view um, kind of the challenges that we've faced we're now kind of reaping the rewards of the work of so many people that came before us, including um, Senator Kelly Haney. You know, um, it sounds weird, but I'd probably disagree with you there and say it is the pinnacle. I think mm. I've seen so many museums around this nation, some very wonderful ones, and we've got you know a, a great one here and a couple of uh, here in Tulsa, uh, just up the road from us. Uh, I've mm -hmm. been through the museums, uh, the Smithsonian's collection, which is wonderful, but uh, no one has, I, I believe, ever told the story in such wonderful detail and thoroughness mm -hmm. as the First Americans Museum. So my personal compliments there. Uh, finally, uh, for those folks who are not familiar with the museum, let's uh, get some logistical information. Uh, where it is, uh, what are the hours, mm -hmm. um, any particular things that people might want to know before coming. Uh, I understand, yeah. of course, there is an admission price, which is helping uh, deal with your expenses. So why don't you run over that real quick for me? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we are open every day of the week except Tuesdays. During the weekdays, we're open 10 to 5, and on the weekends, we're open 11 to 5. Um, so the majority of the museum experience is free. So you can visit 39 restaurants that have indigenous inspired cuisine. You can watch films in FAM theater or visit our FAM store without paying admission. What does cost admission is the two inaugural exhibitions, Oklahoma, which I referenced earlier, and Winnico, Life of an Object, which includes loans from the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian. We have um, a pricing structure you can see online, but we do have a discount for visitors who are tribal citizens. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, the, the admission goes right back into the free programs that we offer many of our schools and the community. So um, it is important to uh, kind of point that out. Arts and culture don't come cheap, right? Now, I will say that um, citizens of tribes that are in our FAM Nation membership program do get free admission. And so far, that includes Caddo Nation, the Peoria Tribe, Cheyenne and Arapaho Tribes, and Chickasaw Nation. Um, so still waiting on those on MCN to come through. Um, but uh, I really well, encourage a visit. There's um, you know, a reason for everybody to come. Uh, the exhibitions are hands-on. Um, and very interactive, and I think great for all ages. Okay, we're going to give the chief's office a call and rattle his cage about that. <laughs> well, I believe I saw him at uh, Indigenous People's Day, but okay. we were so honored to have him there. No, Muskogee Nation is such an important supporter of this project, um, and we expect to add more FAM Nation groups um, or tribes as we grow as an institution. All right. Well, uh, Adrian Molly Hill, uh, please thank you uh, for taking time to, to, to speak with me and kind of fill us in on uh, on how the museum's doing and how you observed such an important day in our history. And uh, I need to get back down there and take another look at it on my own time, I think. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Well, Mado, I thank you. We'll, uh, we'll be talking to you all later. All right. Tis the May, sir. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, 
uh, uh, time for a quick break here. We're going to uh, then uh, go to the um, council hill, uh, council house grounds and talk about uh, talk to people who were here for our Indigenous Day observations. So please stay with us here on Muskogee Radio here on the, on the Brew. Okay, we're going to uh, share now with our um, our piece here from the council house grounds. And first of all, I want to apologize. My uh, uh, recording machine was giving me a heck that day, and so there may be some a little noise or something like that, or a little problem. But uh, I think we got most of it. So please, uh, this was Indigenous Day here in Old Mogi. Golden. I'm one of the co-organizers with Tara Beaver for Indigenous People Day. Okay, um, we're down here to talk to folks and find out, uh, you know, why do this? I mean, why is it so important? It's important for us to recognize our reasons to celebrate instead of taking a day off in honor of a murderer. <laughs> well, I've never quite heard it put that way. But, uh, and uh, here in uh, Omogi, the capital of the Muscogee Nation. It's even more important, especially since we got our reservation reestablished, that we celebrate our indigenous pride and our Muscogee pride right here at the council house. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, something that I guess the community of Muscogee needs to be reminded of, or is it something that's pretty much there all the time? Well, I think Okmulgee um, needs to be reminded sometimes. You know, we have a contentious relationship with the law enforcement here. And also, some of the business owners last year called in a bogus 911 complaint on us saying we started a fire in the street in a trash can last year and had all kinds of fire trucks here when that was not the case. You know, so. It's time to educate some folks. <laughs> you know, nationally, this uh, uh, movement to change the former Columbus Day to Indigenous Day has uh, gotten quite a quite a following in different uh, different places around the nation, including major uh, metropolitan areas. Uh -huh. What do you think about the change and the shift in thinking there? Well, I think that it's not cancel culture for us to tell the truth about who Columbus really was to Native people. You know, um, I saw a post this morning on Facebook to remind everyone that Columbus hung 13 indigenous people, 12 for the disciples and one for Judas. And, you know, there were other atrocities he'd done. And I think it's time for people to understand how harmful that is to our psyche and our young people's upbringing. Are there... Um bright spots here or things that encourage you about uh, I think a uh, growing acceptance of this change? Well I think that it has grown here in Okmulgee but just look Muskogee is celebrating today Tulsa Seminole I mean McAllister so Oklahoma has really taken off but like you mentioned there's a lot of city, the states and cities across the United States celebrating this. So I think there's a lot more than just downing Columbus. It's about celebrating who we are. And in that celebration, I guess that is a bright spot. Um, are there other things that encourage you about, uh, about the changes? That encourage me? I am encouraged um, by, you know, the, the people that are here, the young people. The, the people that turn out and help put this on. There's volunteers here. We have the Muskogee Lady Legends that cooked all this great food for us today. I mean, people are really um, taking notice of this holiday for us. Okay, any final thought? No, but I, I hope you stay and share the day with us, Gary. We're gonna have a great time. Okay, we'll do what we can, but oh. No. I'm Russell Sun Eagle. Um, come from the Pawnee Nation of Oklahoma. 
Uh, I do OK Podcasts, and I also do Unsolved Mysteries of the Reservation. And I'm here today to help out with um, Indigenous Peoples Day and do some live interviews throughout the day and go live on Facebook as well, just to do some more media. This is the first time we'd seen something like this happening here. And uh, I'm curious, as to why do you thought it was so important to come down? Um, you know, Indigenous Peoples Day is really important because getting rid of Columbus Day. You know, it's something that it's something that hasn't been brought up before, but as people are being more, I guess, like waking up and speaking up more, you know, it's uh, it's great to have these events and to abolish Columbus Day. That's, there should never be a day like that. It's full of traumatic stuff, traumatic history, and all kind of stuff that shouldn't even be celebrated. You know, and it's weird that America would give us a day like that. You know, so I think this is important. You know, every tribe should celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day in some way. You know, and um, I'm glad the Creek, uh, Creek Nation asked me to come over and you know, uh, help out with some stuff. So it means a lot to do that, and I'm very honored and thank thankful you know, for uh, everybody that reached out to me to come over. Well, I think uh, you represent a growing trend in uh, in the media, not only Native media, but the media in general, to uh, add more coverage of Native America and do it in a more sophisticated fashion, such as a podcast. Uh, what do you think of that growth in uh, on Native media? The growth of it um it's growing you know it, growing up i talk about this all the time i had very little representation on tv you know i grew up in the 90s so uh, tv was our main source of like looking out in the world you know because Pawnee's a small town and you don't think you're going to make it out and so seeing like you know west duty on this Woods or graham green or just like you know adam beach you know it was very limited back then but now you know, to be a kid now and seeing Res Dogs, Rutherford Falls, Gray, there's all kind of, you know, actors out there, radio DJs, podcasters, um, people out here, you know, and social media has helped with that. You know, it's helped bring a lot of light to MCs and everybody out here, you know, representing natives in a positive way. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's cool. It's really great to be a part of this part of it I guess you know people say like I'm a part of it too but it doesn't feel like it but you know I, I just love getting people's stories out there and helping them bring awareness to the things that they're doing. Sandy Golden. And you're from? Wilika. Wilika. Yeah and I'm on the National Council as you know. Sarah Winery from uh, Kellyville. Uh, why is uh, an observation a celebration if you will? Uh, of uh, Indigenous Day so important to, to, to be happening, particularly in Old Mogi, you think? Well, it, it's about time, you know, to, to uh, change Columbus Day because it's really not true. And the more we celebrate the day, the more people notice, and, and maybe they'll change Columbus Day to Indigenous Day. What are your thoughts? Why is it so important? Well, I think it's uh, time for people to be aware of the, um, well, the tribes, and uh, and that's why I'm here today to see what's going on. <laughs> well, this has been kind of a growing movement across the nation. Uh, many big cities have made these changes. You got Muskogee and Tulsa here mm -hmm. in Oklahoma. Um, does that feel encouraging? You feel like it's going to take hold? Oh yeah, it will. I do. Well, it, it, it took Martin Luther King uh, a long time to get recognized, and finally they made a federal holiday, mm -hmm. you know, but we, right now we're starting in our communities. We're trying to get our communities to do this, as well as the state. And some of the cities, like you said, they do that. They recognize Indigenous Day, but people have to grab hold of it, and probably Oklahoma is one of the states that's going to be lagging way behind. Oh, uh, could be now. <laughs> Why is it so important for it to be happening here in Old Mogi, the uh, capital of the Muscogee Nation? Because we're the original. We were here. We've been here. We, we got moved here, and we're not moving anymore. 
We want people to know we're the original. Ditto. <laughs> I'm Regina Booth, we're from Oklahoma City. <laughs> now, why is it so important for an observation, a celebration like this to take place? Oh my gosh, why? Because we've always been here, you know what I'm saying? And it was, even though we're here, it's like we're we're still invisible to a lot, many, many people. Like we're here, but we're not here. We, we've never left. We've been here this whole time, you know? So just, just you know, having people just come out and say, yeah, like I said, we're still here. We haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> you know, this is um, part of a change we're seeing across the nation. Many uh, major cities have made Columbus Day uh, part of their past and becoming more indigenous uh, day oriented. Uh, what do you think about that change? To be honest, this is my first in the uh what was the indigenous day that because last year i had to work on columbus day and everything so me celebrating this and this is my first time actually setting up like this it I, i'm i'm very proud i'm very proud or whatever and for it to be indigenous day it's more like another holiday it's a holiday for just you know celebration it's us not anybody you know what i'm saying it's not anyone particular race or whatever it's, it's an indigenous day it's our holiday it's it's awesome. I love it. I'm enjoying it. And we're just not starting, so. <laughs> and, uh, of course, the rest of the community is invited, right? Our yes. Native neighbors. Yes, yes. I, I would think so. Everybody come out and enjoy. You know, the more you learn to educate yourself and, you know, see, you know, see, you know, variety, you know. Yes, come out and learn something. Educate, you know. Get to know us. Okay. <laughs> hey, people. what's your name and where are you from? My name's Shannon Johnson, and I'm from Oklahoma City. Okay, what do you think about this celebration, this observation of Indigenous Day? Um, I'm actually proud and happy to be here, honestly. Um, there's like, you know, a lot of new things to learn and a lot of things that are coming out in, like, you know, the news and stuff that a lot of people didn't know about and people are starting to get um, educated about being Native American. But yeah, I'm actually pretty proud and I'm glad that the truth is finally coming out. <laughs> well, you're a, a young Native person. Um, how does this affect you? Do you make the future brighter? Do you tell your friends about it? Uh, how do you react? Um, it actually does make my future brighter because the things that we're taught in school um, isn't entirely true or was not entirely true. So like, as I get older, I learn more about it and like the truth and facts behind everything. Okay, final question. If um, uh, when you, this thing is over and everyone goes home, what kind of thought or feeling do you hope they take with them? Um, honestly, I really just want them to take, like, education with them and, like, actually understand and know what's going on and what happened in the past and why we do everything that we do and why we try to keep our tradition going. Okay, we're going to take a pause here and um, probably take a look back uh, to a Native American day here in Tulsa, in Tulsa, back in... Uh, uh, 2017, uh, a bit of our past there. So please stay with us here on Muskogee Radio. Sammy Haynes, F-A-M-M-Y, last name is H-A-Y, N as in Nancy, E-S. I am chair of the Greater Tulsa Area Indian Affairs Commission. This is uh, Tulsa's dedication of uh, former Columbus Day into uh, a Native American Day. What does it mean for you and the commission, first of all? It's a great day for um, uh, local Native Americans in the Tulsa area. Um, and it, the city acknowledges that uh, um, the historical facts what's being taught in the public school system is inaccurate. So that's why um, 
We are uh, acknowledging Native American Day um, in the city of Tulsa uh, and kind of not really disregarding, but uh, uh, just uh, acknowledging Native American Day and um, not really uh, um, observing um, Columbus Day. Now, as uh, you are an Oklahoma native, right? Yeah. How about told you? Are you Tulsa yeah, resident? Yeah. Did you ever feel kind of left out or so by the city and the state because uh, they acknowledge all this other stuff, including the land run, but you never saw too much about uh, Indian people? Yeah, yes, there there is a kind of a misconception of uh, the establishment of Oklahoma, uh, which began uh, the Oklahoma run or the uh, Oklahoma land run, which is not uh, correctly portrayed at actually what happened. Um, but what we can do um, as Native people to try and educate uh, going forward the inaccuracies and in teaching, uh, I guess, the uh, true uh, story of how uh, Oklahoma began and in particular, you know, how uh, uh, Tulsa uh, began in its uh, beginning as a uh, tribal settlement, Creek tribal set settlement. Have you uh, spoken with other uh, other Indian people about uh, what's happening here, and did you get any feedback? Uh, we've uh, reached out to other cities who have uh, um, experienced the same uh, the same process that we're going through Native American Day. Uh, the city of Denver um, has recently uh, passed a uh, resolution, uh, I guess. Uh, um, continuing the Native American Day or the Indigenous Peoples Day uh, throughout the city. So uh, there are cities who are um, coming abroad to the realization that uh, um, it's best and it's proper to honor um, the Native peoples versus uh, um, Columbus. I saw, I've been uh, seeing actually where some major metropolitan areas, including like Denver, Seattle, Minneapolis, and a couple of others uh, have um, acknowledged this day. Are you kind of glad Tulsa caught up? Uh, yes, uh, Tulsa does have a very large population of Native Americans. We're uh, always ranked uh, in the top three uh, U.S. cities with Native Americans. Uh, um, but yeah, we... Uh, um, are, I wouldn't say behind the curve, but we are, uh, like everybody else, uh, acknowledging. Um, there are, uh, obviously, there are government uh, um, procedures that have to go forward to have a uh, Native American Day uh, declared. So, uh, and those processes take uh, uh, quite a while sometimes. And um, I know that uh, Oklahoma City is doing their best to uh, trying to get the uh, Indigenous Peoples Day as well. And, uh, you know, we were lucky that uh, we had a uh, mayor who was very receptive uh, to our proposal and actually um, was a sponsor of the resolution. He took that to city council. City council unanimously um, approved the resolution. Um, and, and again, it dates back to, um, you know, the tribes... Uh, who were here before the city uh, became uh, what was known as Tulsa City, uh, the, the rich tribal heritage that uh, uh, the Creek, uh, Osage, and the Cherokees bring to the area. Um, and it was just fitting that uh, uh, council knew that it was just in the best interest of uh, Tulsans to go ahead and uh, uh, proclaim uh, November 9th as Native American Day. Now, as chairman of the uh, Tulsa um, Indian Affairs Commission, do you, how do you see this proclamation as um, affecting your mission? What will you be doing? Uh, well, going forward, we will try and uh, educate, uh, try and get some information out to the public schools and try and help them kind of uh, um, reteach uh, this part of history, how uh, Columbus uh, did not, in fact, discover America, how, how he was actually um, further south in South America, um, and that, uh, you know, that uh, that would be a gradual uh, increase or acknowledgement as far as uh, what public schools, which public schools actually try and uh, foster that same idea.
Okay, any final thoughts you'd care to add? Uh, no, it just uh, it was a day of celebration and um, hope that everybody would come out and enjoy themselves and maybe learn um, you know, a few things and just uh, socialize and uh, celebrate uh, Native American Day. We deserve it. Okay. Well, thank you very much, thank you, sir. Um, Chief James, Principal Chief James Floyd, uh, we're here at the uh, Proclamation of Native American Day in Tulsa, which is the heart uh, of our country here in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, first of all, what does it mean for you to have this happen? Well, it's a historic day, uh, especially for Muscogee people, because you know this is Muscogee territory here, and and 70% um, of the city of Tulsa is in Muscogee lands and in our boundaries. And so, for the city of Tulsa to go from Columbus Day to have a celebration of Native American Day is, I think, a huge step in relationships between not just the Muscogee people, but all Native Americans in, in the city of Tulsa. So I think it's a very positive step, and I hope that it leads to even further engagements between Indian people and the city of Tulsa and um, can hopefully heal any existing wounds and, and uh, lay the groundwork for future positive interactions with the city so I'm very well, excited let's uh, walk down that path for a second here now um, uh, in the past this, the relationship between these two governments wasn't that warm uh, Tulsa thought it was you know gonna go on its own but then uh, the Creek Nation showed its presence and its uh, economic uh, wallop so to speak and Tulsa changed its tune now is it are you glad to see it finally kind of uh, played catch-up because there are other uh, major mo metropolitan areas around the nation that have already made uh, such a de declaration. So it's glad to see Tulsa playing catch-up here. I am. I think that especially with uh, first-term mayor, you know, G.T. Bynum, his first year in office to have this designation, I think kind of sets that as a priority, um, that Native American people are important, Muscogee people are important, and I think it's apparent in the dominance of, of both uh, or all the Creek, Cherokee, and, and Osage nations and um, how much we mean to the city of Tulsa today, not just our historic legacy, but um, today and in the future. So it's a good, very good uh, start. Is this uh, event going to spark any uh, activity, uh, good jumping off uh point for uh, your agenda? I believe that today will be a good start in further relationships. We've, we've met with Mayor Bynum before. Um, he's very pleased with our presence here in the city of Tulsa. And um, we have been talking about, um, you know, what's the next steps and what we may do, uh, you know, not just in any commercial development, but in the, in the school system that he and I both are, see as a high priority, make sure that our education gets there uh, and, and is, is portrayed correctly, our interaction um, with maybe other schools in the Tulsa area. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a great you know, start to what we will be doing in the future. So you uh, see it as a, uh, a real positive relationship from now on then? I do. Yeah, you know, and I know that, uh, as you mentioned before, other cities have already begun this, but in the city of, I mean, in the state of Oklahoma, I'm not sure any other cities have done this. Uh, they have the second largest city in Tulsa, and as, in Oklahoma, as, as Tulsa, making this step. It shows the progress and the progressiveness of the people here. Okay, well, I think actually Norman has, uh, and Oklahoma City is kind of on the, on the brink, uh, so you want to give them a little shove over the edge and say, come on, do it? I think this will probably influence them. I think that they see if Tulsa can do it, um, you know, they should do it as well. I think it's the, it's the respectful thing to do. Okay, any final thoughts, sir? Well, it's a great day, uh, weather-wise. And... A lot of hard work went into this, and I want to say thank you to each and every person that, that had a part in this, our very first Native American Day here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are going to have a wonderful time here today. My name is Chuji Kingfisher. I will be your MC for this activity here today. It is a great honor for me to be here and represent my people, my tribe, Native American Oklahoma. 
I am of Cherokee and Katua descent. Glad to be here with each and every one of you, as we say in our language, yo, to hear you. Oh, see what the God and woman. I hope everyone's all right. So if you would, please stand and remove your headgear as we come to Miss Mary Kay Harshaw Henderson. Went back to her old name there for a little bit. As she sings the Lord's Prayer, and these young ladies right here representing various nations will do the Lord's Prayer in sign language. Mary Kay, if you would, please. of approximately 30,000 Native Americans and whereas Native Americans have contributed immeasurably to our city, state, and country, distinguishing themselves as scholars, artists, entrepreneurs, and leaders in all aspects of our society and from the American Revolution to military missions in Iraq and Afghanistan Native Americans have served valiantly in the armed forces of the United States in proportionally greater numbers than the general population and whereas the lands now known as the United States of America were occupied by millions of people for thousands of years before the arrival of the first Europeans and whereas Native peoples of this land aided in the survival of the first European settlers and whereas the city of Tulsa recognizes the fact that Tulsa is built upon the lands first inhabited by the Native Americans of this region and whereas all too often an inaccurate portrayal of history is taught in our school systems that Columbus and the Europeans were the first peoples to discover America and whereas an indigenous people's day was first proposed in 1977 in lieu of Columbus Day by a delegation of Native Nations to the United Nations sponsored International Conference on Discrimination Against Indigenous Populations in the Americas and Whereas a growing number of American cities have recognized the second Monday of October as Indigenous Peoples Day, reassigning Columbus Day as an opportunity to celebrate Indigenous heritage, contributions, and resiliency, and... Whereas the city of Tulsa recognizes its Indigenous population as Native Americans who have made invaluable contributions to our community through their shared knowledge, stewardship of these lands, labor, science, technology, philosophy, arts, and deep cultural influences that have substantially shaped the character of the city of Tulsa and... Now therefore, be it resolved, the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma declares that the second Monday in October as Native American Day in recognition of its Native American citizens and calls on all Indian tribes, national and regional organizations, and all Americans to commemorate this day with appropriate programs and activities to celebrate and honor the culture, contributions, and traditions of Native Americans. Aho, thank you, City of Tulsa. Our special guest has arrived. 
And so we want to give him a chance to speak as we've read our proclamation here. And so would you please make welcome at this time the Honorable Mayor G.T. Bynum. Please give him a round of applause. And so what we are doing is that many of our uh, engagements that we have, many of the things that we have, many of our distinguished honorees, we gift them with a gift, whatever it may be. Today, we are honoring the mayor with the Pendleton as we drape it across his shoulder before we give him a chance to speak. And we want to say thank you, sir, to you and your city council for everything you have done. That's right this time, sir, if you would. Thank you so much. I'm honored to accept this on behalf of all my uh, fellow Tulsans. Now, this first was brought to my attention after I uh, won the election last year that we don't have a day or did not have a day to recognize and say achievements of the great Native Americans who called Tulsa home and have historically. And so I, I was thankful that we had a, a commission in place, the Greater Tulsa Area and Affairs Commission, uh, that I could work with to develop a resolution declaring today to be Native American Day in Tulsa. They did a lot of work looking around the country at, at what cities had done it well, developed a very good uh, recognition of the day. And then, of course, uh, I needed the approval of my colleagues on the Tulsa City Council. And I'm so thankful that we live in a city where uh, the contributions of the Native American community here were so glaringly obvious that when I presented it to the city You've been listening to Muskogee Radio. Join us again next week for more local, tribal, and community news and updates. Middle.